Welcome to Zach's garage. It's 30 degrees. It's the warmest right now. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Gear Garage. Uh, my name is Zach, and this is my show about whitewater kayaking, rafting, supping, paddleboard. Paddleboarding, we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, I even went creature crafting once, so it can be about creature crafting or uh, maybe someday inner tubing. Uh, I'm with my friend Paul Clark. Paul is just an awesome dude. He, uh, before he was a supper, he hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. He's a big time tele skier. Right? He did a lot of tele skiing. I saw some cool stunts you did on dirt yeah. that were pretty cool, but just an all around outdoors guy. And uh, he got into supping a number of years ago, and I just want to ask him some questions about it. And yeah, so uh, welcome, Paul. Thanks Thank for you, joining me. Thank you, sir. And we had a great time, time paddling today. We got on the river today together for a third or fourth time and had a really good time, like lots of laughs, which I really enjoy. Hood River has talented paddleboarders, paddlers, wind sport enthusiasts. Yeah. Uh, to be able to run from D to the town of Hood River on a paddleboard in you know upper class three water with some four features. It's uh, just it's where paddleboarding is going. And yeah. It's so nice that we were able to do that in the middle of winter. We have a great resource here to do it for sure. And the, real, the main reason I, I, I paddleboard is because we have the Hood River in our backyard. If it wasn't here and easy to do, I probably personally wouldn't have gotten into it. And I, I love it. It's just ridiculously fun. So anyway, Paul, how did you get into paddleboarding? Uh, well, it was like I said, a uh, long distance hiker, a uh, long distance paddleboarder, uh, excuse me, a uh, sea kayaker. Mm -hmm. Um, so Baja, Alaska, um, I would do two month trips down on the Sea of Cortez, uh, solo in a, in a sea kayak. Uh, a lot of mountain, uh, things, working for Outward Bound, working for a variety of sea kayak guiding services, backcountry skiing outfitters, uh, ski patrolling, ski oh. instructing. When I moved to Oregon, I had quit sea kayaking. After a long trip, I was done with that. But I still liked self-propelled travel. Yeah. And when I first saw paddleboarding around 2009, 2010, there were just surfboards that people were putting on lakes, yeah. taking them from the ocean and starting to do more inland paddling. And that's when I was introduced to it. I was raised in the Great Basin. The ocean is not my... The Great Basin, Nevada. Oh, you're from Nevada, yeah, too. I'm from Reno. Yeah, I'm from Reno, too. You know that, right? Uh, yeah. Wooster High, class 91. Yeah, I, I graduated from Reed, uh -huh. class of 91. Yeah. So we were in the same... We probably went to the same football game together. I didn't do football. I didn't go. I've watched football. Okay. Well, I anyway, I was anyway. a skate punk in high school. Uh, skateboarding, you know, snow sports. It's just all the, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you. My my form of creativity and therapy and adventure has all been self-propelled. Yeah. Motion, human generated, you know, wheel assisted, non-engine um, traveling. So I'm going to stop you with another question. We were, I was talking to some friends about recreation the other day, and we were talking about snowmobiling and how like sometimes it's annoying or like jet boating. I think I would actually be really into those things. I've just never had the introduction to them or the money to do them. I think if I had the money to do them, I might. Do you think you'd be the same, or do you just love self-propelled self sports? Uh, when I'm getting a, a toe uh -huh. in a long, flat section on a snowmobile, Five miles, that's great. Like in yeah. Polina, in Bend, where I live, mm -hmm. uh, the, the backcountry, a lot of it's snowmobile assisted. Uh, so I'm grateful for yeah. snowmobiles, but I certainly wouldn't want one, the expense, the, the pollution. Yeah. And I do find that motorsports enthusiasts or team sports enthusiasts, they're all focused on a particular aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're active, if you're athletic, regardless of what you're doing, you know, I can't do anything that a Red Bull motorcycle athlete could do, or a yeah. snowmobile athlete, or a Baja 1000, or a NASCAR athlete. Ath athleticism is focus and intensity and training. Well, I take that to paddleboarding. Okay. And I got into it because I won paddleboarding, I got into because I saw that you could tour with it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to tour in Oregon, it's usually going to be on a river. Yep. So I had no river background. I remember. But I wanted to do multi-day river trips. Yeah. Class 2, the John Day, the Lower Deschutes, yeah. where I could just have gear on my bag and basically, like a backpacker, travel that way. Not with a raft, not with a motorized craft, not with eight of your best friends on a, uh, a craft that has a cooler and... All of that gear. I just like the idea of going fast. Like Pacific Crest tra Trail style backpacking, but on the waterways of Oregon. Exactly. I call it lightweight backpacking yeah. on the water. 
And I quickly became, uh, had like a reputation developed for myself as the duffel bag paddleboarder. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought I could take my paddleboarding in all the places that I see kayak. That's the Sea of Cortez, that's uh, the Inside Passage of Alaska. Mm -hmm. So uh, Panama, I've returned to those places and I've done SUP support trips. Yeah. Solo trips with my paddleboard and a bag of gear uh, and off I go. So that's been nice. But to do it regularly, I don't live in Alaska, I don't live in Mexico, yeah. I live in Oregon, and I live on the Deschutes River, so how far can the, I can go on the Deschutes? Well, the lower Deschutes is 100 miles. Yeah. So, you know, I thought, well, how far can I go in a single day? And I've done the entire 100 miles in a 16-hour wow. period on a 12-6 inflatable paddleboard. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Have you done overnights there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, I think Bend is a mecca for that kind of thing, with the John Day close by... Iwahi, relatively close. It's has a good opportunity. Well, don't tell stuff. anybody. But uh, don't tell <laughs> yeah. anybody. But I, I do a lot of traveling. I've been yeah. fortunate that I've gotten into the industry and I've been able to to help certain brands grow with media. I work uh, for Hala as their media house, the Hala Media House. And before your career, kind of doing what you do now, which is like working with Hala as a sales rep, and that you were a photographer, yeah, a professional photographer. Yeah. So you have a background in photography and videography. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you, having uh, a media mm -hmm. perspective and being an athlete mm -hmm. is beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Especially on a, on a solo trip, if there is going to be any documentation, it should be done with a story. Yeah. Not just a you know POV camera, a, a GoPro on the head, or whatever. You know, often my media is pretty selfish because it is self-reflective. Yeah. Uh, but like today, I was looking at our crew of paddlers, and I thought, man. It's nice just to paddle and not have the obligations of trying yeah. to document it. But I was thinking, paddleboarding is a very, river paddleboarding in particular, my thing is very, let me tell the story of this one athlete. Yeah. But seeing a crew today on the river and doing well and, and stylistically, yeah. you know, really progressing the sport and showing that, you know, just amongst ourselves that it could be done, I think that there is a future for the sport. Or and do you think there's a sort of future for whitewater stuff? There is a future for whitewater stuff. Yeah. Uh, because, like I was saying, I don't come from a river background. Mm -hmm. I come from a touring background. Yeah. There, I feel a, like you're a, you're a wilderness person. Like you're a wilderness, a multi-day type of person. Is that right? Yeah. I feel like I'm the same. Yeah. Um, I don't do as much overnight stepping, but like I love people who, personally, who do these sports, not as much for the adrenaline, but for like getting out for multiple days in nature and we use whatever tool it is whether it's a backpack or a mountain yeah. bike or a raft or a sup or whatever to experience these wild places these public lands that we have like that's my personal ethic too must be a reno thing must be a reno thing but paddling on a, on a remote river like the oahi the upper oahi where really the few people who are in that section every year are in light craft yeah paddleboard is a light craft yeah and just for those of you who don't know, don't know paul did this really cool trip it was two years ago you did the, which, you started on the, one of the higher forks of the Oahe? Uh, so we started on uh, the east fork of the Oahe in the Duck Valley Indian Reservation. Mm -hmm. So basically the headwaters in the agricultural area of, of Nevada. Uh, at the start of the, the gorge, we had a portage, of, uh, uh, several portages yeah. for this trip. Uh, the water went from 2,000 CFS to 1,000 CFS in the nine days that we were out there. So we, did, uh, we, we took advantage of how lightweight paddle boards could be. And when you're dealing with the gear necessary for a very remote, uh, inclement, seasonally inclement yeah. type of place. I mean, we had snow, we had blazing heat, we had wind, so we had to have the equipment for yeah. that. And you went but down through the middle, yeah. Hawaii, down through the lower as well? Yeah, so we went upper, 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 oh. and middle, and took out at Rome. So Super cool. 150 miles. And eight days? Is that, right? that was a nine-day trip. Eight, eight, nine, eight. And to me, that's like a real adventure. You know, if I'm going to go do one of the well-known rivers, the commonly done rivers, it's a fun trip. But what you guys, I mean, the Oahe is so variable with weather and flows. Like, you're going out there in a place not seeing anybody else, probably there are a handful of people at most, and figuring it out on a stand-up paddleboard, which makes it more, like, it probably there were some benefits to the stand-up paddleboards, I'm sure, but also some big disadvantages. But that's a true adventure. What would you say the advantages on that trip of a stand-up paddleboard? Well, I think the advantages of a, of a, a solo trip, and this wasn't a solo, I had a partner a friend, with me, right? yeah, had yeah. A, um, a colleague with me. Uh, being that remote, it's nice to have you know another yeah. person. I mean, within five miles, I already had the board pinned, 
and wrapped under a rock. Wow. We were able to free it, and in, you know the quality of the inflatables, the technology of inflatables are such that you could do legitimate expeditions with them. Yeah. We were able to retrieve all the gear, and off we went. Yeah. Uh, so that was day one, and the, the cons you know the, the the mentality of an expedition, you know, very conservative paddling. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that that's definitely a big part of it. Uh, I don't remember the question. The about. advantages of a oh, the advantages of it. For, for an expedition like that, like the Oahu is, a, you know, there, the, there's some like a lot of flat water punctuated with some just challenging rapids, yeah. and some that even rafters or kayakers portage. So, did you feel like there was some advantage to that over maybe another craft or light and fast? Light and fast. And what about disadvantage? To me, I think it's just being able to run rapids. It's a little harder to run some rapids. Possibly. Yeah. But it's the vehicle that I run rapids in. So. It's for you, it's the best, for sure. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's, it's good for the, uh, the style of touring I enjoy. Yeah. I don't want to tour all day sitting and paddling. I don't really want to be in a ducky or an IK. Yeah. I don't want to be in a raft. I don't want to be in a hard shell kayak. Uh, a hard shell kayak is like the alpine ski boot of the industry. Yeah. You could run waterfalls backwards and cartwheels and do big airs, basically. Yeah. Telemarkers, and that's a background of mine, yeah. tends to be a little bit more finesse in style and a, 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 a terrain that accommodates a beauty as opposed to just a like raw adrenaline. Yeah. And I'm not a river paddleboarder. I'm not a whitewater enthusiast for adrenaline. I don't yeah. want to huck. Yeah. I don't want to do crazy rapids. I want to be on the water. And ideally, I want yeah. to be on the water multi yeah. days. I love that. And a paddleboard allows me to go relatively fast, yep. uh, often faster than boats. I mean, in a raft, that same trip is probably 10, 12 days, I'm guessing. Oh, sure. At least. Especially, like, some of the portages would take a lot longer than just grabbing your paddleboard and carrying it around. Or think about, you know, the, the lower to shoots. You know, there is yeah. no section on the lower to shoots that's a, a day trip. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The 40 miles between. Uh, Trout Creek to Moppin. I mean, you could do it in a day, but it would be a pretty painful yeah, thing. I would do that. But on a paddleboard, that's a six-hour trip. Yeah, yeah. So I want to move on to one more thing. Uh, and one thing that's really cool is you've really made a life out of this in a career and of, of being doing adventures, basically, which I think a lot of people want to do. And so people are trying to get sponsored or trying to somehow get like this job where you go on an adventure. Do you have advice for somebody who wants to try to like get sponsors or sort of make a career out of adventuring? Love what you do. Have a story to tell. That's it. I, I do find I'm 45. Uh -huh. uh, the first media that I ever took was on uh, negative film. Uh, an image is developed. It's processed. Mm -hmm. The the creativity of storytelling, at least through photography, was a process. With all of the media innovations that are happening today from social media to the cameras that are being used and the ways that you could edit video in short times and with amazing quality editing styles in your backyard on your computer you could have a, a movie developed in a short time yeah it's crazy uh, shorter than it often took to develop a film in many ways I especially younger generation the like the 20 year olds who are creating media they're creating media to be followed Mm -hmm. I often don't see the media there to tell a story. It's just to catch attention. And I think if, if you want a sponsorship or if you want to be a part of a, a, a sport that is self-propelled, mm -hmm. there has to be personality behind the content. And, and there's so much there, there's so many platforms to create good content. But we're starting to forget the authentic nature of adventures, I think. Hmm. You know, you want to come back from an expedition with at least a thousand new followers, right? And this is how people talk. <laughs> no, I know. No, and I'm like, going to go to you... New Zealand and I'm going to be a month and, I'm, yeah. and my Instagram is going to blow up. That's how people talk. Yeah, and you're saying that doesn't get sponsors. It does. It does. Uh so and it's working for like people. It's working like, for, a for lot like somebody of who wants to. I mean, because that's make, the sponsors want attention. And so if the individual is getting attention, they can share that with the sponsor. So, I mean, it's almost like, like back in the day, we would just go boat and maybe take a couple photos. And now it's like, oh, well, if I go do this, I'll get attention and I'll get some more followers. And that followership is credibility with 
Yeah, if you're a company, so might send me something free, or they might tag. So me I'm wrong. Out. Maybe my advice is not love what you do, but uh, <laughs> well, be able to catch attention to whatever what you you're do. doing is working. Because very few people, like a lot of people, are trying to do what you do and struggle, and you're doing something that's really cool. <sighs> yeah, and, and honestly, if if the the truth comes out with that, have a, a partner that supports you financially and emotionally, and allows you to be the bird that you are. Yeah. You know, my wife Angelique, uh, she's been the backbone of what I do. Yeah. And we don't have kids. We don't even have pets. Yeah. And that creates an element of in, of, of independence that yeah. not everybody's able to do. Yeah. If you have if you have kids, you can't do what I do. Yeah. Which is be selfish and travel <laughs> yeah. almost every day of the year. So what's next? What's the next adventure? Do you have anything planned this spring, this summer? Uh, I just came back from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to go to New Zealand uh, next winter. Ideally, I'd be there right now and, yeah. and doing some programs, but I'm not. I'm going to spend some time in Central Oregon, uh, maybe Slovenia in April. Oh, man. That's high on my list, too. And the Pacific Northwest, uh, working as a rep, working as uh, a person building whitewater uh, paddleboard curriculum. Cool. Um, and offering clinics in a variety of ways. Uh, attending some paddleboard races, just basically represent the brand, represent the sport. Or we see a clock fest? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. That's that's one of my favorites. Exactly. Cool. And then the uh, the Subaru Outdoor Games have been. Oh, that's right. I'm hosting a, a SUP Cross event. Cool. In June. Cool. Well, so what, what are the, do you know the dates of that? That my event will be uh, June twentieth. Okay. Sunday, June twentieth. We we'll have to cool uh, double check that date, but I believe it's Sunday, June twentieth. Cool. And the Clack Fest will be the, the May twentieth, nineteenth and twentieth of May. Yep. And we and we have a bunch of cool sub events at the Clack Fest Festival. It's something I help put on, so that's why I'm kind of putting it out a little bit. But uh, it's a really fun event for all whitewater sports, and we're trying to get more suppers there as well. So cool. it's pronounced super. Is it pronounced super? Hey, we're making a show right now, guys. Um, we have to sign some autographs. Yeah, so we, we should have, probably our, our our paparazzi's out there. They want to talk to us. So. Um, Anyway, thanks for joining us this week before our pop rata comes. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.